This course module covers the technical fundamentals of the Electromagnetic Flow Meters, EMF. After completing this module, you will be able to Explain the principle of electromagnetic induction. Explain how the flow of conductive fluids is measured using this principle. Identify the benefits of the electromagnetic flow metering technique. What is flow measurement? The measurement of liquids, slurries, gases or steam in pipes or channels with a known diameter or shape. The flow is measured in rate per unit time. The value per unit time can be mass or volume. There are two kinds of flow. Continuous flow, e.g. pumping water. Batching e.g. filling of bottles with milk or beverages. Throughout the world, processed fluids can be used in a wide variety of processes, ranging from water applications up to process applications. Of course, the quantities of fluids have to be measured precisely for these processes. Custody transfer, measurement of fluid passing from a supplier to a customer. Product integrity. Customers expect process control systems to provide the right amount of blended materials. Monitoring and reducing wastage enables customers to detect and reduce potentially expensive wastage of process fluid. Efficiency indication enables companies to determine the efficiency of their processes. Process variable control measurement and control during energy transfer applications. Safety. Uncontrolled flows may cause danger, e.g. flooding. Take a water company, for example. Water companies distribute potable water via distribution networks. They measure water that is pumped to customers using electromagnetic flow meters and enables them to account for the water that is used by customers. The advantage is that they can monitor where the water losses, leakage, are occurring and actively help in the maintenance of water infrastructure assets and aids in billing of customers based on their usage. Whilst electromagnetic flow metering is primarily used in full pipes, ABB's expertise also makes it suitable for partially full pipes and channels, often found in effluent applications. Electromagnetic flow metering is based on the principles of Michael Faraday's 1832 discovery. When a conductive liquid, such as water, is moved through a magnetic field, a voltage is induced in the liquid at right angles to the magnetic field. The size of the voltage is directly proportional to the volume flow rate. This induced voltage is detected by sensors known as electrodes. These electrodes transfer the voltage signal to the processing electronics where it can be converted into a usable industrial standard signal. It's important that the flow meter tube is non-magnetic and austenitic stainless steel is the most commonly used material. It's also essential that the flow meter tube has a lining that electrically insulates it from the liquid inside and provides a non-reactive barrier with any corrosive liquids being measured. Distinguishing between flow-induced voltage changes, electrochemical noise and plant-induced noise is a barrier to accurate electromagnetic flow metering. This can be especially difficult in dirty and industrial applications. There are two types of magnet coil excitation used. DC magnet coil excitation, which covers 90% of all applications. AC magnet coil excitation. With DC magnet coil excitation, the coil is fed with a frequency of 3 to 30 Hz, alternating DC current. After the magnetic field is stabilized, the sensor electrode voltage mm -hmm. is measured. Blue. The signal voltages, positive and negative, are averaged to produce a flow signal. The electrode signal measurement period length is chosen specifically to eliminate noise from the AC mains line voltage. Pulsed DC applications. Suitable for continuous flow. 
highest accuracy and stability. Pulsed DC waveform automatically eliminates background noise. Please see the product overview later on for more details. The AC field excitation operates at much higher excitation frequency than the pulsed DC field. The flow signal is integrated continuously. As a result of the higher excitation frequency, the noise signals, e.g. due to multiphase fluids, are minimized. This excitation provides a faster response time of the flow meter system. Therefore, it is the preferred version for especially short batch cycles in fill applications. It is most applicable for fluids with high content of solids, two-phase liquids, liquids with low conductivity or pulsating flows produced by piston pumps. Let's take another closer look at the flow sensor. It consists mainly of magnet coils. The coils and surrounding structure are designed to produce a consistent magnetic field across the whole pipe area. Measuring electrodes to pick up induced voltage. Tube lining. An electrically insulating lining is required to preserve the signal voltage and allow it to be transferred to the electrodes. The tube lining and the electrodes are wetted parts and in direct contact with the fluid. To ensure corrosion resistance and to cover requirements, such as potable water approvals, a proper material selection for these parts are vital. Advantages of the electromagnetic flow meter No moving parts, no mechanical components like PD meters utilize. Unobstructed flow path, nearly full bore compared to a vortex meter. Ability to handle corrosive and erosive liquids by the correct selection of liner and electrode material. Minimum flow conditioning required. Typically three times diameter straight pipe runs upstream is required. Ideal for slurries. Unobstructed flow path. High accuracy. Best accuracy is 0.2 of flow rate. Limitations. Only conductive fluids can be metered. Minimum conductivity is depending on the meter design. 0 0.5, 5 to 20 microsiemens per centimeter. Physical pressure and temperature limits. Max pressure is depending on the diameter limited to 250 bars. Max temperature is limited to 180 degrees C. Heavy coatings, insulating or shorting, can result in measurement errors, e.g. water with high fat content. There are different constructions of the sensor body available. In general, there are two different main types, inline and probe sensors. With inline sensors, the coils can be in a separate housing, outside the meter tube, or they are inside of the meter tube. Finally, there are insertion types which are inserted into the flow conduit. Caused by this insertion construction, there is a reduction in the cross-section area of the bore. We have reduced and octagonal bores. With insertion probes, the sensor design is different from the inline types. Three different types of process connections can be found in the market. Flange type connection is the standard across major industries. This connection is available from DN10 to DN2400. Wafer type connection is a cost effective alternative. This connection is available from DN10 to DN100. Further process connections. For hygienic applications, specific requirements such as cleanability or a gap-free transition from pipe to meter tube without crevices are to be met. Weld stubs, food industry fittings, mail threads or tri-clamps are the ones to be used here. The transmitter provides power to the sensor coils. Power supply options of the transmitter are 
85 to 253 volts mains AC, 24 volts AC-DC. Battery. Renewable energy, solar or wind. The transmitter measures the electrode signal voltage. Calculates volumetric flow rate and totalizer values. Provides outputs as required by the customer. The distribution of the flow in different areas of the pipe should ideally be consistent. This distribution, known as a flow profile, is conditioned either by defined inlet and outlet straight pipe lengths or by using a special internal geometry for the sensor design. Do not install fittings, manifolds, valves, etc. in front of the meter tube since they disturb the flow profile. A slight incline of the pipe provides degassing. ABB offers full bore, reduced bore or octagonal sensor designs to meet even the most difficult installation conditions. The straight pipe length requirements for inlet and outlet are starting at 0 times DN, 0 times DN for the Aquamaster MMGA, and ending up with 50 times DN or 50 times DN for the Aquaprobe. The process master, for example, requires 3 times dn or 2 times dn. Obey the following installation recommendations to ensure proper operation of your meter. Pipe needs to be kept full. Only exception is the ABB Party Mag model, which is designed for wastewater applications with partially filled pipes. Do not install the sensor at the highest point or in the draining off side of the pipeline. Sensor may run partially filled due to air at the highest point in the pipe. With vertical installation recommended, flow direction is upwards. Grounding is not only required because of safety considerations but also to ensure proper operation of the flow meter. The signals measured at the electrodes are only a few millivolts in amplitude. With plastic pipes or pipes with insulating lining, the signal can be affected by stray ground currents which may flow through the flow meter. To avoid this, the fluid must be grounded using grounding rings or grounding electrodes. When stray potentials are present, a grounding ring upstream and downstream of the flow meter sensor is required. For measurement related reasons, the potentials in the station ground and in the pipeline should be identical. To ensure corrosion resistance, a choice of grounding ring and electrode materials is available. Now let's summarize this learning module. So, what have you learned so far? Why flow is measured. Principle of EMF induction. Differences between DC or AC magnetic coil excitation. Benefits of electromagnetic flow metering. Basic functions or elements of a sensor and transmitter. Installation conditions. 